welcome into the ONTV Fantasy Football League podcast. I'm Joey Tysick. Across from me, as always, is Joe Johnson. And we have finished week eight, going into week nine of the fantasy football season. And we had one of the highest scoring weeks of the season this past week. 70 touchdowns, I heard, on the red zone. That's uh, when we've been kind of averaging maybe about 50 a week. We mm-hmm. got 70 in week uh, eight. Yeah, so when we look at scores, uh, they're kind of inflated quite a bit. Um, but that led to a lot of interesting close matchups that came down to the wire. There was a stat correction that luckily was not involved in any of those uh finals but is that kicked in yet or yes i saw it today it it kicked in today um as yahoo finalized everything um so i will point that out uh, (laughs) because it could have been just really wild uh, just saw the score change and that just uh, yeah makes your loss that much more frustrating yeah so we'll get right into the matchups the uh highest score of this week malik hill look what happens when you make an effort Okay. When you actually try. Okay, but look at this to be fair. <laughs> now, I talked to him last Wednesday and we set his lineup. We went over things. But if he had paid attention and he saw that on Thursday night Puka Nakua was active, you easily would have started Puka Nakua, correct? Well, it depends. I mean, it was unexpected. Uh they were the the team was saying that he was on a snap count, a snap count. So, unless you were really desperate, you might have wanted to wait a week to see how he performed. Of course, if you did bench him, you'd be kicking yourself. But I really don't blame anyone for uh, having him on the bench because you just didn't know what you were going to get. Yeah. But my, the only reason I bring that up is because the guy that he picked up in replace of Puka. Now it didn't end up being the determining factor of his win. But Lab McConkey had 29 points. (laughs) So if Malik was to actually pay attention, and this is just going off of me, I think I would have sat either Lad McConkey or Keon Coleman for Puka Nakua. I don't know which one I would have sat. Maybe Keon. Um, But because we did it early and we already switched things, you know, that's just the randomness of fantasy football that I I wanted to bring up, I guess. Um, Because a normal person might have just played Puka in his scenario with all of his injuries that he's had. So, And I'm, the other one that I was going to bring up is playing Raheem Mostert. Now, yeah. I know that he didn't really have any other choice, but because he didn't pick anybody up, he put in Raheem Mostert, who only had 19 rushing yards and 11 receiving yards, but he had two touchdowns to get you 16 points. And correct me if I'm wrong, they were the first touchdowns of the season for Mostert? Uh, I believe so, yeah, because he was hurt most of the early so season. Most people would have just given up on right. Mostert. He just bass backwards falls into Mostert scoring two touchdowns in Week right. 8. So, just to point out, fantasy football does crazy things. Crazy things happen. <laughs> um, but Malik, still in sixth place at the moment. But had a great week all around. Lamar Jackson continues to be the best player in fantasy this season. Terry McLaurin also doing very good. Tyreek Hill got Tua back. What did uh, Tyreek Hill say before week eight? Start me. Yeah, well, I don't know if we're too happy about starting him for 13 points when he's your number one pick. Yeah, but it is better than what he has been producing the past couple months. Yeah. Um, Malik got solid production out of his running backs. George Kittle continues to be the best tight end in football this year. Um, like I said, Lad McConkey was a huge pickup for him. Keon Coleman had a really good game. And then he really didn't leave anything on the bench, which, you know, he didn't have much of a bench anyway. But, yeah. And then on uh, Becky's side, we finally saw Jalen Hurts really have a good game. He had three rushing touchdowns. Were they all tush pushes? No. I no? believe there was one that was not. was okay. like a 10-yard touchdown or something but i do believe two of them were tush pushes <laughs> so yeah the i was uh, back i was at the lions game so i didn't get to see a lot of these touchdowns so i was curious uh, how many of those were tush pushes and that's you know the tush push is the probably the number one reason you would draft hurts because you're going to be poaching those touchdowns away from the running backs and it sure paid off in week eight yeah um marvin harrison jr becky stuck with him i was not willing to do that in my other leagues and kind of bit me in the butt but uh she did he had 23 points which is great um 
David Montgomery, you got to see that, him throwing a touchdown pass. Yeah, that was that was a blast. That was just a big party, and everyone yeah. got in on it. Mm-hmm. So he got two touchdowns from you know an unproductive day, but the Lions put up 52 points, so you would assume David Montgomery is going to get a score in there somewhere. Um, Trey McBride continues to be really good for Arizona. Um, but the big disappointments for Becky this week were Jordan Mason, who has been frustrating the last couple weeks because of injuries. He's been starting the games, getting injured early on or midway through, and then not playing the rest of the game. It's getting to the point where you don't know if you can trust him. Yeah. You know, you, you, you put him in to start, and then when they leave the game, you get screwed over on points. Yeah, and now the trickiest part is they are on bye this week. Yeah. And Christian McCaffrey is potentially expected to come back after their bye. Yeah. Um, so his usefulness may be over. Yeah, it may be over. And if McCaffrey's not back, is Mason healthy? It, like, there's a lot of question marks. Yeah. Um, and then Drake London finally coming back down to earth. Only got just seven points. Um, Atlanta beating Tampa Bay 31-26. But, you know, they didn't really need Drake London to do anything. Bijan had a pretty good game. And yeah. uh, Mooney actually had another good game. And, and London's been fairly consistent. He's gotten in the end zone quite a bit this season, so I, I don't blame her for starting London. He just had a down week. Yeah. And finally, we got to see Brandon Aubrey also have a normal kicking game for once. <laughs> just He's two, uh, a field goal and three extra points for only six points. Uh, Becky continues to ride the Detroit defense, though, that has actually been pretty good in points. Well, they had the the uh, return. Pump, pump return or kickoff return? Uh, punt return, yeah. yeah and uh, that was exciting as heck. So, yep. yeah, 16 points. And then Becky did leave Kirk Cousins on her bench, but Jalen Hurts outscored him. She mm-hmm. had David Njoku on her bench, also put up big numbers, didn't outscore McBride. Um, and James Conner, who... Didn't really do, well, I guess yeah, instead so. of Jordan Mason, but that would have been a tough call. Um, so, yeah. Didn't leave anything on the bench in this matchup overall, which I, I always think is a good good thing to see. Yeah, and you know what? I feel bad for Becky because um, she put up 150 points, which mm-hmm. normally will win you a game in the ONTV League. Yeah. She's going up against a guy who was barely able to crack a hundred points over the last several weeks. Yeah. And then he leads the league the week she plays him. Right. Uh, you know, we talk about this every week that it's not just making good decisions and having right players in the right spot, but a lot of luck plays into this too. And she just got a bad draw in week eight. Yeah. Um, our next matchup, unfortunately is your matchup. Ah, so Joe battle. lost to Marie, one fifty six point seven to one forty seven point seven. The other thing I didn't realize is that you did actually play Darnell Mooney. I swear I looked at your lineup the other day and it wasn't showing up. Um, Darnell Mooney was a part of that stat correction. Darnell Mooney was oh, awarded. Point. He was awarded a catch that was technically to Bijan Robinson for six yards. So luckily it didn't come down to that, but. It was a considering thing, so you did lose a point, so your point spread is a little 1.6 more. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I had a monster lead throughout most of the weekend uh, up through Sunday night. I think I was up by 40-plus points, getting fairly confident that I was going to go 3-0 and in my three fantasy leagues this weekend. And then Sunday night happened where apparently the Niners defense did not get the memo that C.D. Lamb is good (laughs) and that maybe they should put a defender on him. Mm -hmm. And he just absolutely blew up. Might have been his biggest point production this season. Yeah, it was. And I slowly watched my lead dwindle, and I still clung on to an eight-point lead heading into Monday night. Mm -hmm. And as that lead whittled down – I knew I wasn't going to survive the night. And then uh, with Maurice Pittsburgh defense, they ran a punt back uh, for a touchdown. Mm-hmm. And as they say, that's all she wrote. Yeah, and it was it was wild because Pittsburgh did nothing in the first half. They had zero sacks. They gave up like six points. So you were kind of back on pace at halftime. Yeah. And then coming out of halftime, Pittsburgh got like three straight sacks or yeah. something or three sacks within so many plays. Yeah. Then they got the punt return touchdown. Then they got a late interception. And, yeah, it just – it was over. 
I don't know if you ever heard of a band called the Boomtown Rats. They released no. they released a song called I Don't Like Mondays. Mm. And that's kind of my theme for this season. Yeah. And I do not look forward, whether I'm leading or whether I'm trailing, <laughs> I hate Monday night football mm. because either I give up the lead uh, or I get so close on Monday night only to fall short. Yeah. I do not have good luck on Monday night. Mm. So. What did you like about your team, though, this week? It seems like Kyron Williams continues to do his thing. Brees Hall, Brees Hall kind of went back to what he did before the past couple weeks. Yeah, couldn't crack uh, <clears throat> 10 points. Um, Kate Onton has turned out to be a great waiver wire pickup. Uh, I've only had him on my roster for about two weeks. Yeah. And uh, he's uh, outperformed Ferguson, who I like a lot, but Kate Otten is going to get the start until yeah. further. I would assume 29. he's. I'd assume he's going to be the guy until at least Mike Evans comes back. Yeah. Um, but even if Evans comes back, then you know, he still might be their number two option. Yeah. So I mean, you know, the the fantasy experts are like, you know, with the, with Godwin and Evans out, uh, Otten's going to benefit. My God, they, yeah, did they he underestimated how he was going to benefit? Uh, right. Almost thirty points. Uh, Diggs looks like, despite giving me another double digit day, it looks like he might be hurt at least for a week, if not a couple of no, weeks. I'm he's out have... for the season. Oh, oh, he's done for the season. Okay. ACL tear. Yeah. It says I, I are here. So I'm going to have to flat out drop him. <clears throat> so he um, goes to your, uh, long list of season ending injury players. Oh, it's, it's like the scene in gone with the wind where the camera <laughs> pans all the war wounded on gurneys and stretchers and getting their mm -hmm. legs amputated. Um, that's what my fantasy football season has looked like. I could rattle off 10 players that I've lost for the long term or for the season. And he's just another one. Mm -hmm. So it's heartbreaking because he, he was a late draft pick and he had been constantly producing for me. And, uh, I hate to see that happen to him. Yeah. Um, we got to talk about Purdy. Uh, this was, uh, a situation on, on Sunday night where, I was like, okay, if he doesn't perform, he's going to my bench. Mm -hmm. And about halfway through that game, I was ready to say, okay, I'm done with Purdy. Uh, but then he s scored some points. In the end, he gave me 26 points. Yeah. And But sitting on my bench, I have uh, Sam Darnold, uh, who has a really great matchup this weekend. So I'm going to I'm going to think about it and whoever has the best matchup is going to get the Oh no, uh, actually yeah, you uh, have he's to off play. this week. So yeah. yeah, so Darnold goes in. We'll see what he does and then I will have a quarterback controversy when Purdy returns back from the bye week. Yeah, the thing that's been helping Purdy a lot this year is he's been running the ball quite a bit more than um we've seen in the past and that's been really giving him those extra few points here and there. Even like again, he didn't have a passing touchdown in this game, but still getting 26 points is huge. One thing that was a bit surprising is, uh, even though he's on my bench, uh, Debo uh, was in the game uh, coming back from that sickness, that illness that he had, pneumonia. I left him on my bench because I wasn't quite sure what kind of stamina he was going to have. And, and he actually played pretty well, but then he got hurt again. Got hurt again. And so he's listed as questionable. I don't know. I, luckily, he has the bye week to recover. But I was happy to see Debo back. We'll see what he's looking like uh, after the bye week. Yeah. Um. Where are you at with Jordan Addison? Because I know he's normally one of your guys, but he hasn't been really doing much. I know. Uh, it, it's uh, he, he may be relegated to the bench really, really soon. Uh, I have him in several leagues because I like that Darnold Addison uh, hookup, mm -hmm. uh, but he hasn't been getting a whole lot of attention, and, and you think he would with Jefferson getting all the attention from defenders. Yeah. Uh, Addison doesn't seem to be benefiting, so... Right. He may get relegated to the bench uh, really soon. I recently picked up uh, Worthy on the waiver wire from uh, the Chiefs. Mm -hmm. uh, he might go into that spot. We'll see. Gotcha. Uh, on Marie's side, Jared Goff had three passing touchdowns for only 85 yards and a rushing yard. You know what's funny is I saw a meme going around. It was it's a, a I think it was a Phantom Menace reference where Padme says, uh, oh, the Lions put up 52 points. Uh, Goff had a really good game, didn't he? Yeah, that means. Didn't he? Uh, so, yeah, they won. They had a blast. And you would think that if you have Goff, you would go excitedly go check your fantasy scores mm -hmm. and only find out he only put up 
15 points. That's yeah, really he, shocking. He would have only had, if he didn't get those touchdowns, he would have only had three and a half points. <laughs> so that just tells you. Um, he had a good day, but it wasn't a great fantasy day. Yeah. CeeDee Lamb, like you said, carried Marie to the win, finally kind of showing up after being, you know, one of the top receivers um, in the draft. He's dead to me. <laughs> Cortland Sutton coming back off of a zero from last week. So for Marie to stick with Cortland Sutton was Damn. pretty surprising. Um, Derrick Henry continuing to get his touchdowns. DeAndre Swift. I don't know what happened to DeAndre Swift in the last so many weeks, but he's been cruising lately. Yeah. And just helping um, people win fantasy matchups. And he's part of why I think Marie's actually been doing well. Yeah. He had a really long touchdown, didn't he? Where yeah. He was skirting the sidelines, and you're thinking, oh, just knock him out. Mm-hmm. And it's somehow he just streaked down that sideline into a touchdown, and yeah. he's been really proving the naysayers wrong. He's been having a, a pretty great season. Yep. Uh, Travis Kelsey. First was- touchdown of the season against yep. me, of course. Yeah, but it's not his first big game. I mean, it is his biggest game of the season, I do believe. Oh, by far, I think, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, it was 16. I thought I thought he had maybe like an 18, but no, it's yeah. 25. So, yeah, his best game of the season. But then Amari Cooper only putting up 1.3. He was a severe dud for a lot of people. Yeah. And Michael Pittman, he got Anthony Richardson back and immediately now gets Joe Flacco back. Yeah, so I, I would imagine you think that he's going to benefit from Flacco's return. Right. Uh, at one point, as I'm, you know, I'm sitting at the football game, the Lions game, checking fantasy scores, and I look over at my brother-in-law, and I'm like, "Is Pittman hurt? Because he had zero points. Yeah, probably through what three quarters. Well, there was a point where Anthony Richardson was like three of fifteen passing ah. or something like that. So, wow. um, very disappointing. And then he checked himself out of the game. I don't know if you saw that on. Twitter or social media. Oh, yeah, because he was tired. Yeah, he said he was tired, which <laughs> isn't going to bode over well with the coaches. I'm tired, but I come to work every day. Yeah. Um, and then Marie on her bench, Nazi Harris has been on a tear ever since uh, the Steelers' offense is getting going with Russell Wilson. He's had three straight games of over 100 yards, so maybe she can squeeze him into the starting lineup. Tucker Craft continuing to get touchdowns for Green Bay. Hot. But uh, they are going to probably most likely have to go back to Malik Willis. Um, there is a chance that Jordan Love could play this week against the Lions, but we'll have to wait and see. And then um, Patrick Mahomes didn't really do much. Well, he had two touchdowns, didn't he? And they, it was his, they said it was his first touchdowns in October. Yeah. So he glossed over Pittsburgh. I just want to touch on them real quick that I did have the lead and could have won our matchup, uh, but she has to give credit to that Pittsburgh defense. Not only. Uh, did they play well getting uh, sacks and stuff? But the the uh, that kick return uh, pretty much clinched the game. So yeah, Pittsburgh uh, helped her get that win. Yeah, and in, it's it's kind of fun. I know it's not for you, but it's kind of fun to see a, a defense actually win you a matchup because um, that doesn't happen too often. No, it's you know it's funny now that you mention it. Most defenses are barely putting up double digits this season. So yeah. Even though a couple of weeks ago in the other league, I picked up Tampa Bay off the waiver wire, and they gave me like 30 points. I was going to say, um, most most like default Yahoo and ESPN scoring, it's hard to get double-digit uh, defensive scoring because as soon as a team scores, it starts dropping the points, which is kind of annoying, but also makes it so that defenses aren't too strong or overpowered yeah. um, for play. But, yeah, if if she didn't get the touchdown – Six point oh, difference. Would have been really close. So it would have gotten a lot closer. <laughs> um, maybe that late interception. But if that late interception and the touchdown didn't happen, might you might have lost to the stat correction. <laughs> oh, can you imagine that? So imagine waking up yeah. to, uh, and that's happened before. I've seen that happen before. Losing a game because of a stat correction. Yeah, and we'll uh, we'll get to that in a in a little bit. But first, we do have Tracy's matchup against Ian. Unfortunately, this was our only non-close matchup, really. Um, a complete blowout, at least. And correct me if I'm wrong, Tracy is now leading the league in points. Her team has yes. been a juggernaut. Yeah. And Ian, who has been on fire the past three weeks or so, failed to crack three digits. Right. And uh, Tracy uh, schooled him. Yeah. And, uh, again, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, we've kind of been saying it all season. 
They've been that dynamic duo. But the big surprises from her team have been Alvin Kamara and Joe Mixon. Alvin Kamara, I think, just because he's been older, he's been he's struggled at times, but he continues to get catches and be involved. And then Joe Mixon, I don't know what happened to him. He just looks he looks way better than he did last year. He's got to be in the conversation for top RB of the season. Uh, you know, Kamara was really, really hot early on. He cooled off a little bit, even though he put up 18 points in week eight. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, uh, Saquon Barkley, he's yep. been r right up there. Right. But he's been up and down. But Mixon, week after week, he's getting into the end zone. Uh, he's been, uh, he could be in the argument for one of the steals of the draft. He's just yeah. been fantastic. Easily. Um, and then Kaimi Fairbairn continues to be a really good kicker. Um, so he's been producing a lot of points. Sam Laporta finally had a, actually a, a good game. Six Ooh, catches, a touchdown. That was fun to see. Yeah. He getting, almost had two touchdowns. Yeah. He was, ended up getting ruled down on the one, but he came close to having a two TD game. Yeah. And then Ian's team kind of came back down to earth like we've seen at times this year. Um, he was on a little bit of a hot streak, but he picked up Tua this week. Um, since Tua was coming back, probably thought, you know, maybe he could get some extra points. Didn't really do a whole lot. Um, St. Brown, he caught a touchdown, but again, the, the Lions offense didn't have to do anything. Yeah, just about every time that they took possession or started a new drive that was on, on the opposing side of the field, so... There wasn't much of a need for a lots of yardage. So yeah. yeah. And then Garrett Wilson actually continues to be really good, even though the Jets now have Devontae Adams. Kenneth Walker, this was kind of the disappointing one of the week. Yeah. He went up against Buffalo, who's one of the worst run defenses in the league, and just did nothing. He had four catches for thirty three yards and only twelve rushing yards. Mm. Um, wow, so that's shocking. Big disappointment there. Saquon Barkley Pretty much a big disappointment because there's no bonuses in this league. So 108 yards, only one catch, only amounts to 12 points. Um, so a down week for Barkley, even though it's it's kind of an average running back week. Brock Bowers as well, kind of, he's been more of like a 15-point-a-week guy, and he only got 10 this week. Yeah, but still, you know, when your floor is right. double digits, uh, he's, again, he's in the conversation for – one of, if not the top tight end in the game right now. Right. And then I think we had mentioned it before that Jaden Reed, you know, now that he's not getting those touchdowns that he was getting early on in the season, he's just kind of there. Like they're not, he he's, depends on big plays and he's the type of guy that I don't, I don't necessarily like because it's similar to like a Debo Samuel where their highs are really high, but their lows are <laughs> sad and can lose you weeks. Yeah. Um. Same with DJ Moore. Didn't really do anything. The, Bears struggled to move the ball whatsoever in that game. Um, so all around, Ian had a rough a rough weekend, which is unfortunate. And he benched Justin Herbert, who had 24 points. Um, nothing on the bench really mattered for him. And then uh, basically anybody Tracy played would have been fine because everybody on her bench had points. Yeah. And put up big points, actually. Kyle, Kyle Pitts. Pitts. Chris you know, Olave coming back. People were down on Kyle Pitts saying, oh, he's putting up another disappointing season. And then, bam, yeah. he what catches two touchdowns, 25 points. Yeah, all of a sudden he's kind of been uh, on a little bit of a hot streak, I believe. Well, the Falcons in general, and, and they benefited. This is so crazy. I don't know how NFL does their scheduling, but they benefited from playing Tampa Bay twice in three weeks. Yeah. And the first time they played them, they blew up. Guess what? They played him again, and the exact same thing happened. And so yeah. if you had a Falcons player, you had to start him against Tampa Bay, and it paid off. Right. I believe, what was it, like Kirk Cousins threw for like 800 yards on <laughs> the Bucks this year. Let me, I'm going to look on Be <laughs> Becky's team. Um, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, almost 800 yards against the Buccaneers this year. So yeah, that just tells you. It seems like Kirk Cousins has the, the Bucks number. Yeah, and, and Cousins and the Falcons uh, just seem to be turning things around. You know, bijan has been playing pretty well, and mm -hmm. Cousins has been playing well, and his receivers are making catches, and uh, Falcons are, uh, you know, they're having fun out there. Yeah, and their their division's pretty wide open, so we'll, we'll kind of have to wait and see how they end up going. But, all right, the long-awaited matchup. <laughs> oh, no. Here we go. <sighs> Sammy beat me. I lost to the 0-7 team, and I lost 139.4 to 139.22.
I was a part oh. of the stat correction. Yeah. I was a part of the stat correction. Luckily, it, it, well, I should say luckily for Sammy, yeah. that stat correction didn't change the outcome. His luck has been so bad. Yeah. Imagine if he woke up today and saw that his win, his only win on the season so far, was changed to a loss. Uh, I would be uh, yeah. concerned for his mental health. Right. And um, there's a lot of things that went into this matchup. It was literally down to the wire yeah. of the afternoon games. Our our matchup was all over by the 4 o'clock games. We didn't have any mm. uh, Sunday night teams or Monday night. Yeah. So what happened was our main games, really, were Kansas City versus Vegas. Uh, Denver versus Carolina, and then um, the Chargers playing the Saints. So within the last three minutes, I believe, of those games, the I think Sammy was up by like, I don't know, three or four points, something like that. And then all of a sudden, I saw that the Chargers were in the red zone. And I thought, oh man, if J.K. Dobbins scores here, it's over. Well, Justin Herbert ends up throwing a pick. And so mm-hmm. now that alleviates me, and then I think time was starting to run out. So, you know, that game was basically getting over with at that point. That was the last chance for them to really score. Um, and then not too long after, Denver's defense, they got a pick. And so I went back up in points, and then Kansas City had a a sack. Or no, the fumble recovery. The fumble recovery so that put Sammy back up by like a point or two. <laughs> oh, and then I think it was like Denver got one final sack or turnover or something. I was up by, um, what was it? If I lost 1.6 today or gained it. Anyway, two or three points, basically three points. And Sammy gets the last second. The Bears marched down the field against Washington after they couldn't move the ball all day. Scored their final touchdown, and I thought, man, as long as we don't throw it to Cole Komet, we're good. And I saw them get in the end zone. I can't remember who scored. I'm like, okay, we're good. Cole Komet didn't score. I don't think there's any other possibilities for them to to win. What did they do? They went for two. (laughs) And who did they throw it to when they went for two points? But Cole Komet on a little tight end screen, Mm. and he just walked into the end zone. And then I went, great. That right. kind of reminds me of the matchup you and I had a few yeah. weeks ago on Monday night where yeah. it was close. You know, I think I got the win, and then a last-second play, even though there still was one more play in that game. But yeah. <laughs> now think about that. Imagine if you're going up against – well, you had him on your bench. Imagine if you're going up against uh, Daniels with Washington and he throws that freaking Hail yeah. Mary for a touchdown. Yeah, and so the other thing – because I was up by three and Cole Komet got the two point, I thought, well, I think if my math is correct, I'm, I should still be up by one point. Yeah. Well, then what happened was I looked at the box scores and I saw that my Denver defense had lost another two points or something like that. And I was like, well, how did that happen? I thought that game was over. Well, I looked and apparently Denver was trying to, they did like a fake punt at the, towards the end of the game. And I think it pissed off Carolina. So there was a lot of talk back and forth later because Carolina thought that Denver was like trying to show off or something. So what Carolina ended up doing was they didn't just run the clock out. They moved the ball all the way down the field and they scored with 12 seconds left in the game or something like that and lost me Denver two or three points on defense, which ended up completely losing the matchup for me. See, I, I so that like, that happened almost simultaneously when Cole Komet scored the two point conversion. Yeah, I I feel like uh, Yahoo needs to change that that thing where they when your defense starts playing, you get ten points, and then they start subtracting points. <laughs> I don't like that. I would rather start off with zero, and then when when the game expires, if if the other team was held to zero or held to three. Then you get the bonus points at the end, and that could be the difference in the game. I don't like subtracting <laughs> points as you go along. That's that's I don't I don't know. That's I don't weird like to me. I don't like getting the points either way because you can do it either way. Like if you're losing the points, you can kind of see what's going on, and then but if 
and it stinks to see your defense just slowly losing points. But also on the other end of like when you're like, oh, their defense isn't doing all that well, and then you realize they only gave up like three points, and then at the very end they get this big boost, and you're like, well, where'd those points come from? <laughs> so like either way, I think it's kind of annoying, and there's there's nothing we can do about it. Well, that was frustrating too in, in my game was – my, I had San Fran defense going against Dallas and CD Lamb. So every time Marie got points from CD Lamb, I was losing points yeah. for my defense. And so it was mm-hmm. like standing in quicksand. <laughs> yeah. And so then Sammy had, you know, this two point win over me or 1.8 win. And I was like, okay, well, then uh, late yesterday, I saw all over. Fantasy Twitter and things like that. They said there's a stat correction that is going to happen per NFL research or whatever. And they said it was for B. John Robinson. And I lit up and I was like, there's no way. So I looked into it. They had given Darnell Mooney a catch that was actually to B. John Robinson. And I was like, no way. There's a chance. I ended up seeing it's only six yards. So doing the math last night before they actually officially did it. I realized I was going to lose by, what is this, point zero uh, point one eight. Um, So, yeah, it's a brutal loss. But I'm I'm also glad that it I didn't end up winning because of the stat correction because I can't I can't imagine after seeing Sammy all excited about his win yesterday, talking about his revenge tour, if he would have lost to a stat correction, that would have been yeah. brutal. Now let's talk about some of the choices you made. One one in particular uh, I need to call you out on. I knew this was going to bite me in the butt no matter how I played it, and I talked to Sammy about it. But, yeah, go, go Hopkins ahead. gets traded to the Chiefs, right? Yep. And you start him. Now, I think it's risky when a, a player is playing their first game with a new team, mm-hmm. and especially wide receiver. Running back's different. You give them the ball, they find the hole. Uh, but – Wide receivers got to know the routes and, and all that stuff. So you took a chance starting Hopkins. And when I look at your bench, I cringe. Yeah, now, it was tough. You gave up on uh, Devontae Smith. He scored 20 points after yeah, having a Yeah, because he had .8 the, the week before. The week before. Same Malik with Malik Neighbors, Neighbors. You kind of gave up on. He only had uh, eight the week before. Now, granted, Daniels did get that. Uh, Hail Mary at the end, but he ended up outscoring Allen. And I, I don't know if I can fault you for that. Uh, same thing with Myers. Myers, you know, he, had he was hurt. Game. Yeah, uh, Myers was a late game. Uh, they, he was like day to day all all week. So I wasn't sure if he was going to play or not. But yeah, that's the one thing that jumps out at me is I don't know if I would have started Hopkins. Yeah. I mean, I, I applaud you for picking him up off the waiver wire, but I don't know if I would have started him. As yeah, this week I do think I got a little cute. It was also a big decision. I, I knew it was going to be rough because I would have easily started T. Higgins. He ended up getting hurt on Friday, I believe, in practice, yeah. um, which was a big disappointment. So then I had to swap things around. I was nervous with Devontae Smith, nervous with Malik Neighbors, especially going against Pittsburgh. Um, Brian Thomas Jr. as well. Like Green Bay has been really good, so I, he's. I mean, Brian Thomas has been great, but I was just nervous about the matchup, so I got too cute with it. I also yeah. think I was thinking of you know the week prior, Amari Cooper came in, Josh Allen threw him a touchdown. Mm-hmm. I thought you know DeAndre Hopkins playing against Las Vegas. I thought it was gonna do something, and it, yeah. he got only two catches. So yeah, I, I got too cute with it. Anybody else that I would have slotted in probably wins me the matchup, but. Sammy did say he left uh, James Cook on the bench too, so yeah. he had a Brian uh, Brian Thomas Jr. I have him in another league, and and I've I haven't benched him the entire season. Uh, he got the start pretty early on. He's been very very consistent, and uh, yeah. I just leave him in. Now he's questionable. He got an injury, so we'll see what his future looks like. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So. And I've I've been burnt by it before, getting too cute with lineups, and uh, finally got one this year. Devontae Adams most likely also going to go to my bench uh, for next week until further notice. So yeah. we'll see. But it's it's tough. And that's that's what's also part of the fun in these smaller leagues. There's a lot of tough decisions you have to make each oh, week. Sure. Um, so bit me in the butt, but Sammy did end up getting his first win. So congratulations to him. Well, let's look at some of his players that handed him the win. Josh Jacobs' monster game. Yeah. Over 25 points. He finally got Jonathan Taylor uh, back healthy. 
Achan, I, this might be the first time on this podcast we brought up his name. Yeah. Uh, he had a monster game with Tua coming back. Well, if you look at his stats, too, he has over 23 points in the three games he's played with Tua. Yeah. And part of that is because Tua throws him the ball a ton. Yeah. He has seven or more targets in each of the games he's played with Tua. Yeah. And that's been insane. He's like Alvin Kamara basically, but younger right now um, when Tua plays. So he could be really good for him going forward. Yeah. Now the good news is for you, you know, not to dwell on this too much, you know, you and I, despite getting losses this week, we're, we're pretty much locked in for the playoffs unless you go on a, either one of us goes on a losing streak. Yeah, I would knock on some wood before we start uh, talking about that. But. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, you don't want to go on a losing streak, but you know, Sammy needed this, so right. consider it charity on your <laughs> part. Um, so we'll see what happens. Um, it's going to come down to the wire, obviously. So that, that's going to be, I think, the fun part about it. Um, and we'll just see from there. Um, all right, waiver wire. Not a whole lot out there, even in a smaller league like we are. There's just not too much going on at the moment. There wasn't any, t- like, crazy injuries besides maybe the Diggs injury, but... I don't know if you really want to go after the Texans wide receivers that are out there. Let's talk about the quarterback position real quick. I picked up this guy in two leagues. I don't know if I have room on my roster for him in our ONTV league, but Matt Stafford getting his two wide receivers back Mm -hmm. looked incredible. And after only throwing three touchdowns on the season up until week eight, he had, what, four? Did he have four this past week? Uh, um, he looked like the Rams, uh, were super bowl bound. Yeah. He did it for. Yeah. And so, uh, I don't know how many leagues he's sitting on the waiver wire. Like I said, I picked him up in two leagues and I'm tempted to pick him up in the ON TV league. Um, but with, he looked like a different player with those two receivers back on the field and the addition of Kyron Williams to scoring touchdowns every week, the Rams suddenly look like contenders. Uh, so if you're hurting in the area of quarterback, Stafford's a guy that if he's still available on your waiver wire, you need to take a look at. Yeah, I I can see that. Um, the other ones there's Dak Prescott got dropped by Tracy. (laughs) He's been not so good. (laughs) Um, Geno Smith continues to just, I don't know. He, he looks good in games, but he's just not getting touchdowns. He's not consistent enough. Yeah. And then Caleb Williams before this week would have been a pretty good ad, but he looked awful this past weekend. Um, you could maybe think of Jameis Winston. He looked really good for the Browns. Ah, he did, I don't know. Yeah. He uh, He's similar to Matthew Stafford, though, where he is susceptible for turning the ball over. Um, but he's going to throw a lot. I'm sure Cleveland's going to need to throw quite a bit. Um, but yeah. And that's uh, – he was throwing the Tillman, right? Yeah, I, I got to applaud anyone who had the foresight to pick up Tillman last week on the waiver wire. Two touchdowns, monster game. Yeah. Where did he come from? My Lord. Yeah, he's a, I believe he's a second year player and he had a really good rookie tape, but didn't get it. He wasn't able to fit into the lineup with Amari Cooper and all that. So now that Amari Cooper's gone, he becomes the number one guy. Um, he might be good going forward as well. So it's it's definitely something to to keep an eye on. Yeah. Um, also boosting David and Joku as well. Um, but I would take a bank or take a bet on any of the Cleveland receivers because you don't know from one game that Tillman looks like it could be Jameis's guy, but yeah. you know, there's Jerry Judy, Elijah Moore are still out there. Um, so maybe you take a risk on one of the Browns wide receivers, which sounds crazy to say. Well, it's you know, it's so weird uh, to have him come in. It, there's a different energy there now. It yeah. just feels different and I don't know why management was just dragging their feet. I mean, the injury, you know, obviously forced them to make the change, but they're basically everyone who was telling Brown's management to cut the other guy, yeah. uh, they're being all proven right. It mm-hmm. was just looked like a different team out there. Right. And to beat the Ravens of, of all teams. Yeah. Most people were saying the Ravens were the best team in the NFL, and now they lost to the Browns. Yeah, that's the problem about the Ravens. They wow. – they seem to do this all the time where they, especially in divisional matchups where they just seem to struggle. Like 
Pittsburgh has their number almost every year. Um, and Cleveland, I, I thought maybe had a chance, but I didn't think it would be like that, I guess. Yeah. Um, Khalil Shakir is out there. He was pretty good for Buffalo, but I felt like everybody was good for Buffalo besides Amari Cooper. Uh, Tony Pollard has a really good matchup this week um, at New England. Um, well, it's at home against New England if you need um, a running back. Josh Downs out there again. We've seen Big he's been man. incredible with uh, Joe Flacco, so he could be one that you pick up. Seems like people are starting to expose Minnesota's defense. So yeah, they're ranked there. dead last against uh, wide receivers. So yeah. if you want to take a flyer, Downs is your guy. Right. Um, another Especially one with Flacco coming back. Yeah. Uh, Calvin Ridley, another guy. You know, Tennessee is just going to be down in games. Seems like he's the number one guy there now that D-Hop is gone. Maybe you take a chance on that. Boy, he, you know, I, I watched him in person on Sunday, and he was impressive. He had he had over 100 yards receiving in the first <laughs> yeah. half. I think like it was in the early. first quarter. <laughs> yeah. uh, it was it was frustrating. Yeah. You know, I, you were, for a second there, I'm thinking, wait a second. Mm-hmm. I hope uh, Detroit's not looking past these guys. Right. <laughs> and they finally got their act together. But, yeah. man, did Ridley look good out there. Yeah, and then it's unfortunate that he got hurt because I was going to bring up Tyrone Tracy. Uh, uh, for the Giants, he's been incredible for them uh, since he's kind of stepped into the main role. But it uh, looks like he's going to have a concussion, so he's most likely going to miss the Washington game, especially since they played on Monday. Um, but you could still add him if you have an extra slot because when he comes back, he's going to have Carolina. Then he's on a bye. But then his next three matchups are Tampa Bay, Dallas, New Orleans. All those matchups aren't good against the run. Um, so he could be a good option. Um, late in the season if you need some wins. You know, had a big game uh, last night, and I know it's tough to, to trust the Giants right now, but Slayton had a big game last night, and yeah. he was pretty much catching everything that was going his way. Now, will the Giants make a change at quarterback if it, if their season gets out of reach, possibly, and how will that affect the receivers? But yeah. Slayton looked really great last and night. And Darius Slayton is still one of those names that's on the trade market, so he could also go to a better situation as well. That yeah, would be interesting. Um, so there's a chance there. Um, let's do the, the look at the defenses like we've been doing, see if there's any uh, streaming defenses. And at the top of the list, it's easy. Philadelphia playing Jacksonville. And Philadelphia's defense looked really good against Cincinnati, I think. Um, maybe struggled just a little bit early on, but once they got going, we're good. And Jacksonville, they have, like, no receivers. Christian Kirk just got um, out for the season with a shoulder injury. Brian Thomas, like we said, m- might miss this game. And then Gabe Davis is also hurt. Travis Etienne, yeah. we don't know about his status. So the Jacksonville Jaguars' weapons are just depleted right now. So Philly might be able to take advantage of it. Um, I would have suggested Minnesota if they kept if uh, Indianapolis kept Anthony Richardson, but with it being Joe Flacco, maybe not. Yeah. Um, Tennessee against New England, that's not bad. Might be a low scoring matchup. New Orleans against Carolina could get it might be a little too cute, but Carolina, like we said, just traded Deontay Johnson, so they don't really have as many weapons for Bryce Young. Maybe it's Andy Dalton that starts. I don't know. You know, it's one thing I noticed as I was uh, making picks this morning for this upcoming week. There's some really bad matchups coming up in week yeah. nine. Bad teams playing bad teams. And I guess those are the defenses you might want to target because those are going to be low-scoring games. Yeah, and um, the other one I was going to bring up too is like in two weeks, um, I've been waking up for most of the, the London games, even though they're really bad. But... <laughs> I'm a fantasy sicko. My team, like I have a lot of Jacksonville players or some Jacksonville players. So I've woke, woken up for the games in two weeks in the Germany game. Mm-hmm. It is Carolina at the giants. I'm not waking up for it. See, that, I'm not doing it. That must be punishment for world <laughs> war two. Yeah. That, it's, that's a brutal, ugly game that was supposed to showcase the NFL's product overseas. Yeah. It seems like they should step in and go, wait a second, maybe we need to rethink this. Yeah. But I will say, I know maybe this after dogging them, it sounds a little weird, but I will say New York's, the Giants defense is actually not too bad. They're, they're pretty bad against the pass or bad against the run. They're pretty good against the pass. The thing that saves them is they tend to get a lot of sacks. And so Mm -hmm. that gives you some points here and there, even if they do give up some points. Um, 
So that's another option. They have like a pretty easy matchup. They go against Washington this week, which could be a little bit scary, but I also think Washington might just slow the game down and just run. Mm -hmm. And then next week, like I said, they play Carolina in Germany. So that might be a, a sneaky one to take advantage of. Yeah. But yeah, there's some defenses out there that could be good for, for this week. Um, looking ahead to next week, week nine, we have the 49ers on a bye and the Steelers, I believe, are both on bye. And right off the bat, my matchup is against Tracy. At the moment, I am expected to win 137 to 136. Um, only a point four differential at the moment. Uh, this could be a really fun one. Again, Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson scares the living daylights out of me. I have <laughs> Justin Jefferson in one of my leagues, so it's one of those tough things that I have to root for him, but not too much. And then we have some primetime games apiece. And, um, yeah, I, I think my lineup is pretty much set. There's a couple things I'm watching out for is injuries because T. Higgins, he might get the nod over Malik Neighbors if T. Higgins is healthy. Um, Devontae Smith, I, I think I'm going to go back to him. Um, but I'm nervous because I Jacoby Myers has a good matchup against Cincinnati, so that's a tough call there. Um, so as usual for me, wide receiver probably going to be a tough call, but we'll see what happens. I think Tracy's probably going to stick with what she's got. She's been rolling out this lineup for a couple weeks now. Maybe she swaps out. Eh, I don't even want to make a suggestion. Maybe she swaps out Brian Robinson for a receiver, but Robinson against the Giants, it's a really good matchup. Again, a lot of tough calls in uh, this league. So we'll see what happens there, but we are the highest scoring projection matchup at the moment. So could be the highlight of the week. Hopefully I'm on the uh, the good side of that. Um, Becky playing uh, Marie. This is a pretty big matchup because Marie just recently took first place with her win over Joe this week. Uh, she's like fifth in points, so she's gotten a little bit lucky with her matchups. But <laughs> she is on a six-game winning streak nonetheless. Wow. So she started 0-2 and has won six straight to almost secure her spot in the playoffs. And then, um, but Becky is still holding on two games out of uh, the playoff race. And she's just hoping that things get back on track for her. Looks like she set her lineup. James Conner is back in for her. Um, she's got the double tight end starting. How do you feel about that? Because she has David Njoku and Trey McBride, who are really good tight ends. You know, early on in the season, we were pretty down on tight ends, uh, legitimately so. Uh, but now there's some tight ends that are producing points. So, you know, if you can put in two tight ends that are scoring 15, 18, 20 or more points, do it. Mm -hmm. That's fine, especially with all the injuries and having to, you know, fill in bye weeks in, in injury vacancies. Yeah. Uh, yeah, start two two tight ends if you got them. Yeah. And the other thing I'll say, too, is if she can get a win this week, Christian McCaffrey might be back the following week. And if you give Christian McCaffrey back, you never know what could happen. Yeah. Um. So this week, I think, is a really big week for Becky to – have a chance to come back in it. Yeah. Um, for Marie, I believe her lineup is also set. Um, maybe she has to think about Amari Cooper because DK Metcalf is most likely back this week. Um, and I think that's the only lineup decision she'd have, really have to make is who does she replace for DK Metcalf? Um, and then she has to pick up a defense. She has Pittsburgh's defense on a bye. And then, um, It'll be fun to see because she has Jared Goff going against Green Bay, which is a big divisional matchup. So hopefully uh, for Detroit, they have a good game. And then she does have the quote-unquote closer, Travis Kelsey, on the Monday night matchup oh. if she is behind. So she could make another Monday night miracle if it comes down to it. Hmm. Um, next matchup I have, oh, from me to you, I give you Sammy. <laughs> he I, I he is not going to get a two game win streak. <laughs> now, uh you can see that uh he's favored to win right now, but that's only because my defense is on a bye week. I need to pick up a, a defense on the waiver wire tomorrow, so that's gonna adjust that spread a little bit. Um, but uh I, I can't give him a two game win streak. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sammy. I know you need it. 
I know you're scratching and clawing for that uh, bottom playoff spot, but it's not going to be against me. <laughs> and uh, we'll see how it plays out. But uh, I will yeah. just say, now that his team is healthy, now we don't know about Jordan Love. Jordan Love <clears throat> maybe playing, maybe not. That would be his only thing. And it stinks because I know he was just talking about benching C.J. Stroud finally. He said he, he, he can't do it anymore. And now Jordan Love might have an injury, so either has to make a change there or just go back to C.J. Stroud, who plays on Thursday night, which makes it tough. Um, but his team, now healthy, they look pretty formidable. They, yeah. they look a little scary on paper. And I applaud him, you know, for sticking with it and, and hitting the waiver wire and offering trades and bettering his team to finally secure a win. You really got to give him credit. Yeah. Uh, it's just a shame it's only going to last one week. We'll see. Um, <laughs> is there any other any other matchup decision that you have to make? Or no, you're set? I uh, I've already made some changes. I got Darnold in at quarterback. Um, I may leave Addison in for the hookup. Uh, I'll have to put some thought into that. I don't really have any other. Well, if D no Depot's on a buy. Uh, I don't have a wide receiver to go in for Addison unless I pick one up on the waiver wire. So yeah, we'll see. And um, that'll give you yeah. a nice, uh, a fun watch for Sunday night football too, because you have Sam Darnold and Jordan Addison yeah. potentially. Uh, Sammy has Jonathan Taylor on Sunday night, so that could be fun watching, like yeah. a lot of your star players kind of go at it. Yeah, it's always fun to watch your fantasy players in prime time. That's that's always a good time. And, and the last thing that I'll bring up, and you know, you called me a jinx this yesterday, last well, night, every talking time about you would text me something, it would happen on the well, TV, and I'm like, stop it. Well, let me tell you something. So, you just played Pittsburgh's defense on Monday night, right? Uh huh. Look who Sammy has on his defense. Well, he has Kansas. Am I looking at the right one? Kansas City. And they play Tampa Bay on. What are you? What are you getting at? Monday night. Oh, <laughs> so I don't like Mondays. So you're down to the Monday night so, defensive matchup once again. Yeah. Now I would say I, I do have Worthy though. So yeah. that gives me a little bit. Yeah, I'm that's, gonna start that's worthy. true. So as long as I have somebody going, but yeah, I, I can't <laughs> take this man. My heart can't take the fourth quarter when yeah. things are so close and the clock's ticking and I'm clinging on to a lead and then Kansas City, you know defenses on the field that I'm like, don't get a sack. Don't get a sack. Right. So no, you're absolutely right there, but uh, we'll see how it plays out. Might going to come down to the wire on Monday again. Yep. It will be fun. And we will definitely hear about it from Sammy. If you end up losing. <sighs> um, and finally, what's we he calling it? The comeback tour, the Is revenge was, tour, the revenge tour. Okay. Yeah. And then finally we have Ian going up against Malik, who is still in sixth place for, I believe like three, four weeks in a row now, <laughs> uh, living up to the name, just going to make the playoffs. Um, he has to make a tight end change from George Kittle. That's going to be a big blow to him. Once again, I will remind him and make sure that he sets his lineup. He'll probably go with Taysom Hill, who was healthy. Um, and I think they might add him into more plays going into this Carolina game. So he could actually have a pretty decent game. Um, Jameson Williams still going to be suspended. Travis Etienne, I wouldn't trust him at this point. So probably no decision there. He'll just have to figure out where he's going to put Puka in. Um, who does he sit for Puka? Maybe it's Keon Coleman. Maybe it's Ladd McConkey, but both of those guys just had really good games. So it's, it's hard to make yeah. the decision. That's and a then problem to have. And then Ian, you know, same thing. He's just hoping that his team bounces back. They all kind of had bad weeks uh, the previous week. The fun thing for him, he's got Amon Ross St. Brown and Jaden Reed in that matchup of a divisional matchup. So that'll be a fun watch. He's got Green Bay's defense right now. I would advise changing that. You don't ever want to root Ooh. for the defense against the Lions. Yeah. Especially right now either. Especially Ian too. He's yeah. a big Detroit guy. Right. So, so just from a... Uh, a real life perspective, a fantasy perspective, I would assume he's going to make a defensive change there. Yeah. Um, does he go back to the Flacco well? You know, he was starting Flacco for a little while. Yeah. Does he stick with Tua? Does he go back to Justin Herbert? Maybe got a, a quarterback controversy there, but yeah. should be another close matchup. And Hunt's still sitting on his bench as of right now. Do you yeah. work Hunt into your starting lineup? Yeah, I don't know. You got That's... Walker, Barkley. I don't know. Yeah, you, you would have to, to replace like. 
Jaden Reed or DJ Moore. Yeah. And they have pretty good matchups this week. So, yeah, it's a tough call. Mm. But um, I think when Malik gets his new tight end, should be pretty pretty even matchup overall. So that should be good. Um, did you want to close on breaking news? Uh, did, you, did you hear the breaking news today? I did not. J-Mo was pulled over oh, and no. uh, found a gun under his passenger oh, seat. Uh, so I don't know what's going to come of that. Apparently an arrest wasn't <sighs> made and people are asking why not if you find a gun in someone's under the passenger seat. Mm -hmm. Um, but this guy, he keeps making these knuckleheaded decisions and you want to root for the guy, but come on, what, yeah. what are you doing? Especially starting this season when it, it seemed like he was really buying into the team and wanting to do better. So that's, hmm, that is a little disheartening. But the the one thing I will fight back about a little bit that's annoying with the NFL in general is that we have guys like Jordan Addison that are playing. He's gotten into some altercations yeah. um, that just haven't gone to fruition. Rasheed Rice, before he got hurt, whatever came of that, they're like, yeah. oh, we got to go through the legal process. Well, come on. Yeah. So I think it's annoying that the NFL lets these guys get away with too much at times. So it, it's just one of those annoying things. And it's just so much money is on the line. And yeah. that's why they always err on the side of caution because these guys put butts in the seats and it's, is it fair? No, but right. That's their motivation. Yeah. So. And come on, it's your job. Like why would you go around trying to mess it up? Um, anyway, yeah. back to the, the exciting stuff, I guess. Um, looking at the standings really quick. Let me uh, transfer this over. We got, Marie, like I said, in first place at six and two. Tracy, Joe, and Ian all at five and three. Malik and I are at four and four. And then we have Becky at two and six. Sammy at one and seven. Mm. So once again, field's getting shrunk, getting a little bit closer, a little bit closer to the end of the season. Now we're at what, five weeks left? Yeah. Week nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, six weeks. Okay. So 16 full weeks left to go. Uh, before we get to the fantasy playoffs, you got six weeks to get those wins. You know, that's why I said, even if Sammy, if Sammy was to go win out and he ends up at seven and seven, he could make the playoffs as long as, you know, somebody doesn't go on a big losing streak, but we'll see. Yeah. So as always make the waiver wo moves that you need. I believe there's a trade deadline in about a week or two. In so if you NFL? need it. Uh, or in the NFL, but I think it follows along kind of with fantasy. Oh, okay. Next Tuesday is the real NFL deadline, I believe. And I think the fantasy one is either that week or the week after. I want to say it's the week after, so don't call me. But just make sure you get in your trades if you're still feeling like you need to make an adjustment to your team. Hit the waiver wire. And good luck to everyone but my opponent in week nine. <laughs>